Lift off will start in T minus 10 seconds. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. We have ignition. In the United States of America, we have a major problem in this country with how Americans are looking at terrorism. Just a few examples. When a man who was rational by all accounts, all of his friends said he was rational, he had an engineering degree, he was very uh, intelligent, high IQ, had uh, made a lot of money. When he flew his private plane into an IRS building and left a note as a political protest, this was an act of political protest, they said, this is a madman. But when, Colonel, uh, when uh, Lieutenant or Captain Hassan kills the people down in, this is obviously a conspiracy, he was in contact with somebody in Yemen. He wasn't a madman. You see this, this, uh, this psychiatrist that was in the army. When a man in northern Europe plans for two years to bomb a building in Oslo and then kill all of these multiculturalists, and he does it with a political screed that he writes, justifying this and quoting many, many Islamophobes from around the world, including the major ones that are here. When, when he does that, it's, he's a madman. That's all, he's just a madman. So why is it that when these hijackers hijacked these planes and drove them into, why weren't they mad? What's the rationality behind that reasoning? It, either they're t all terrorists or they're all madmen. But let's have a standard that is based on some kind of rational criterion. Because from my perspective, it's madness. We're living in a time that's so extreme that if it doesn't drive you mad, you're not sane. If it doesn't drive you mad, you're not sane. One of the major problems in the United States of America today is the, the economy. That's what they say. It's the economy stupid. What they talk about is the problem is entitlements. It's all this welfare. No, there's only one problem with the American economy. It is a war-based economy. It is spending almost all of our budget in Washington is going to the military industrial complex and until that stops nothing is going to change in this country they don't want to deal with the fact that the the budgets that the Pentagon gets could completely rebuild the entire planet we could have in in Mauritania the main street in Mauritania is John F Kennedy Boulevard you know why the Mauritanians say John F. Kennedy Boulevard? Because he used to send wheat to the Mauritanians. If you ask an old Mauritanian who lived at that time, who was John Kennedy? Man kana Yahya Kennedy. He'll say, a good man from the Americans, he used to feed poor people. When Hillary Clinton asked Sheikh Abdullah bin Bayya in Qatar, what, what can we do to improve America's are, are how people view us abroad. Sheikh Abdullah says, feed people. Don't drop bombs on them. It won't make you any friends. And they won't even be frenemies. Really, don't drop bombs on people. Afghanistan is one of the poorest countries in the world today. If you read Roland Michaud, 
this extraordinary French photographer and his wife. In the 1960s, they lived in Afghanistan. It was one of the most beautiful places in the world. They fell in love with it and its people. And you can look at the pictures of beauty. Afghanis used to plant gardens. They, they loved flowers. Every Afghani had a flower garden in his house. Many pictures of Afghanis he picked showing them smelling flowers. They used to fly kites. They're, they love kites, Afghani people. They would go and fly kites. They had picnics. In this country, they say these are terrorists. How did they become terrorists? Those who, among them who are terrorizing. How did they become terrorists? Over a decade of war, Russia killed at least 1.5 million Afghanis. Russians lost about 13,000 people. We don't know how many we've killed, but today we're mourning the dead of New York. And it was said earlier, we have to remind the American people of the dead of Baghdad of the dead of Kabul and also of the danger of the imminent death of people in Tehran, of people in Qum, of people in Tabriz for being nothing other than simple people who are trying to live their lives in peace and security and because of the failure of political people their lives are endangered and threatened. This is the reality. We cannot allow the incompetence of these political leaders to get you and I, Zayd and Amr, John and Abdullah, killing each other. This has to stop as a project in the human condition. Because the only people that benefit by this, you know, uh, Karen Armstrong was saying the fact that the people that support her this program to create more peace in the world are the businessmen because businessmen don't like war. Businessmen don't like war unless they're in the business of war. Then they love war. Then they love war. There are people here that love war because it's an exciting time for them. They make a lot of money off the blood of people. Sheikh Abdullah bin Bayya said the Arab Spring was watered with blood. This is what's going on. Innocent people being killed, whether it's in New York, Baghdad, wherever it is, Washington, D.C., it's unacceptable. And as a human community, if we don't begin to recognize that we have to reestablish and reassert ourselves as individuals that have rights to have good governance, to have people that are looking out for our best interest because these people in power today are not looking out for our best interest. And let me give you one example. It, in an extraordinary study called the China Study of Nutrition, 20 years with top experts from Princeton, from Oxford, that determined that most of the diseases that are happening in the United States of America are directly related to the diets of the American people and yet Americans are lied to that they need milk that they need meat that they need all these things fat and sugar if you give it to rats they will die because they can't stop consuming it Omar ibn al-Khattab in the Muwatta of Imam Malik said Iyakum wal laham fa inna lahu darawa ka darawat al-khamar beware of meat because it has the addiction of wine it, you can become addicted to meat. It's harmful for you if you consume too much meat. This is all proven. But when Oprah Winfrey, after reading about this, announces it on national television that she doesn't want to eat beef anymore, the cattle lobby sues her. The pyramid of, of food that you see, this pyramid that you see of food, was actually restructured after the dairy and meat lobby said, no, 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 you're going to harm our economy and so science is subjugated to greed you see this is the problem when we have most of our scientists in this country working in defense industries instead of trying to find cures for cancer they're trying to find better ways to kill people and when they you see they had a problem when they were thinking about Saudi Arabia and if we have to ever use nuclear weapons on these places we're going to destroy all the oil infrastructure 
And so they had American scientists, good people that go to church on Sunday most likely, PhDs from the best universities. So they developed the neutron bomb that kills all the people and leaves the infrastructure standing. This is the type of madness that we're living in. This is unacceptable as a human condition. When the number one industry on this planet is tobacco, alcohol, and narcotics, and number two, a close rival, is weapons, something is wrong with the human project. Something is seriously wrong with the human project. There are two questions to ask. Why do we need all these weapons when most of us I don't have any problem with you, you don't have any problem with me. If you want to know why people get aggressive against you, disrespect them. In the ghettos in, in Washington, D.C., there's people that carry around guns. You know what they really want? They want respect. Because if you pull out a gun, you suddenly have an incredible amount of respect coming from the person on the other end. He respects you. And that's the, the, that's the level that these people have fallen to because they feel so disrespected that they have to carry around, they have to look at you like, what you looking at? What are you looking at? Because they think you're looking at them with contempt. They think you're looking at them without any respect. That's what the African American in the inner cities in the United States feels. He wants respect. She wants respect. And it's not offered. And now because uh, Obama is president, suddenly it's all over. Race, hey man, we're beyond that. Tell the Tea Party that. You know, tell, tell the white supremacists that. Tell the, and let me tell you about the Tea Party, because I read the Tea Party's manifesto, and I agreed with probably about 80% of that book. I'm, I'm not exaggerating. I read their manifesto. People just say, oh, Tea Party, Tea Party. See, they never read what they actually have to say. You should actually read what they have to say. A lot of their complaints are very justified. But the Tea Party is, even though there's some African Americans in the Tea Party, undeniably, the Tea Party is largely a Norman Rockwell America that doesn't exist anymore. These people have seen a change in the demographics of this country. They've seen a Kenya Luo tribesman become the president of the United States of America. He could not get elected in Kenya because Luo people can't get elected to high political offices. His father was a failure because he got some of the highest degrees in this country when he got back to Kenya because of the tribalism in his country he was not able to advance and yet his son could become president of the United States you see this this these aspects of America are very troubling to certain Americans they're troubling to them but as somebody who has Irish American ancestry welcome to America it's part of the negotiating process.